Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the dojo. It's uh, always great to have you here. And uh, today we're going to be talking about finances. You know, it's the beginning of the year and uh, it's, you know, you got to start thinking about taxes and money and getting, getting yourself sorted out. So I wrote an article recently called Six Steps to Free Up Some Extra Money at the End of the Month. And it's uh, about this uh, concept of a financial cleanse, right? You know how people like go on juice cleanses and, you know, there's all kinds of different cleanses you can do, but uh, a financial cleanse. So it's something that uh, I've been thinking about because, you know, what happens is uh, there are all these little charges now, right? There used to be like Comcast, right? You pay a hundred and whatever dollars and you got your TV, phone and internet. Now there's... Uh, all sorts of options. Uh, you might have Comcast just for your internet. And uh, and then you've got maybe Google TV, but maybe Google TV is not enough. So you also get Hulu and maybe you want to add HBO Go to that. And uh, if you're like me, you've got a whole bunch of different internet marketing services that you're paying for. But how many of those things are really, really important to you? So we're looking at kind of giving ourselves a little bit of a haircut. And what we're going to go through here is the process I went through uh, to kind of get clarity about where all of my freaking money is going. So it all starts with step number one, which is start out with a spreadsheet. Now, there are some apps which uh, I've not purchased or used any of the apps, but there are some apps which will take a look at all of your uh, month, your, your services that you pay for and tell you which ones might be kind of duplicated or which ones could be reduced. Um, I've never used that and I don't find those to be uh, thorough enough for me. So I start out with a spreadsheet. I use a Microsoft Excel on my MacBook Pro. And this way I can get a, make a list, a detailed list of everything. And that's step number two is gathering all your data. Now, for most of us these days, all of this data lives on the internet. So you're going to need to get all the data for your bank accounts, right? So hopefully you only have one and uh, you want to look at, you know, the last month of activity. And you may also use credit cards. So you're going to want to look at all the credit cards that you used last month. Um, and you want to get all that data. Now, if you don't have online access, then you want to get the paper statements, right? The most recent paper statements. And that way you're going to have everything that you could have spent money on um, in, in one spot. So that's step number two is gathering the data. Now, step three is to list all of your charges. And this could be a little surprising, okay? I know when I went through this process, I was like, oh, I didn't even remember that one. Or, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, I pay that much for that now, right? Because something's increased in price and you're not really notified. So what you want to do on your spreadsheet is list all of your charges. You want to list everything that you spent money on. So you're going to have some, some restaurant charges. You're going to have gas charges. You're going to have maybe a car wash charge. You're going to have your, you know, your phone, TV, internet charges. Um, you know, you might have all, all different uh, uh, internet uh, services that you might use if you're, if you're active on the internet like I am. 
But the important thing is that you list all of them. We want to eliminate any surprises. Um, now, one one further thing you can do, uh, this isn't even in the article, is you can list your charges in chronological order. And this way, in future months, you will know exactly what day different charges will hit your bank account or hit your credit card. All right. But initially, you just want to get everything down in one place, and that's uh, listing it all on the spreadsheet. So if you look at mine, I've got my car payment, my, uh, my rideshare insurance, uh, of course, my cell phone, right, which is uh, AT&T, my gas expense, I pay YouTube for TV, I pay Spotify, you know, for music in my car, uh, restaurant money. Uh, I also have a food delivery service that cost me $338 to get six, six meals delivered every single week. Um, I have Apple TV and Apple storage, um, Amazon Prime, of course. And then I got a bunch of business expenses, something called Active Campaign, which holds on to my email addresses, HostGator, which uh, hosts my websites, GoDaddy, ClickFunnels, Mighty Network, Schedule Ones, Zimeo, Zendesk, right? All the stuff. And uh, it looks, it, it, you'll make quite a list. You'll make quite a list, but you want to, you want to make sure the list is complete. Step four then is determine what stays and what goes. So for example, this Apple TV. Well, I bought that because I wanted to watch a program called The Morning Show, which was great. But now that The Morning Show, I've watched it, there's nothing else on Apple TV that I want. And I think I'm getting charged like $9 or something a month for that. That's something that can go. So you want to look at, you know, is it really important to you? And the best way to determine that is what I call the Starbucks test, right? So uh, part of my restaurant money is Starbucks. And I spend quite a bit of money on Starbucks. Um, when I'm driving, I will often get two uh, cold brews a day. That's like three, three thirty-five. That's seven dollars a day on Starbucks. So when I say, does it pass the Starbucks test? Okay, so... Some people would say, you know, you don't need to spend that kind of money on Starbucks. You could just go to a like a gas station and you can get gas for you can get uh, coffee for maybe fifty cents to seventy five cents or even a dollar. But certainly, you don't have to be paying three dollars and thirty five cents a shot. Or uh, or my brother is now making his own cold brew and that's saving him some money and he he enjoys making it. But for me, I simply love the vanilla sweet cream cold brew at Starbucks. And it is worth it for me, all right? I've thought about it. How, how would it impact me if I didn't have that Starbucks cold brew? And you know what? I, I wouldn't be a happy camper. I would be miserable. I would, I would not like to give that up um, if I don't have to. You know, if I had to, sure. I, of course, I can live with, without a, star, uh, a vanilla sweet cream cold brew. But since it's available and it supports me by keeping me alert while I'm driving, um, and it tastes so darn good, and it's kind of a reward. I kind of do it every four hours. Um, it's a keeper, right? So that's the Starbucks test. Is it does does the the item on your list is it that kind of essential as as it is as the Starbucks is for me? If it is, you keep it, right? If it's not, you cut it. Okay. <clears throat> the next thing, you, step five is you want to look at things that that you spend money on each month, and instead of cutting it, can you reduce it? So for example, uh, getting gas, you know, are you getting your gas at the least expensive gas station? Have you really done the research to find out where the least expensive gas is? Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a really a quick way that you can, you know, lower your, lower your, your uh, gas expense. Your restaurant expense, right? Uh, how many times are you eating out every single week? You know, can you reduce that amount? Or what I do when I'm driving, I rarely eat, right? I I just drive. So like the last two days, I went out and drive. I went driving on Super Bowl Sunday, and then also on Monday, and I started at five five in the morning, and I drove until about two. And during that time, I just didn't eat, right? I just uh, drank my my two coffees. And uh, then had my meal after I finished my shift. So 
you don't really need to eat all the time. There's this thing called intermittent fasting, which suggests that if you don't eat from, say, your, your, your dinner meal until lunch, um, that there's all kinds of financial benefits to doing that. Um, I mean, all sorts of physical benefits to doing that. Uh, they say it's really good for your body to experience hunger at least once a day. So when you do intermittent fasting, you just don't eat your breakfast. And then uh, by the time you get around to lunch, you're hungry. And what I found is the food tastes so much better. So that's another way you could reduce your food uh, intake is by uh, cutting out a meal. So step five says, you know, uh, how can you lower some of your monthly amounts? So there's a, there's, there are a couple of ideas. So then what you want to do is make another column on your spreadsheet and uh, take out the things that you're going to take out and reduce the, uh, the amounts in, in the, in the uh, categories that you're going to reduce and then total it up and do a comparison. And uh, when I did that, I was able to save $150 a month. Uh, because I've done this before, most things I've already trimmed about as comfortably as I can, but I was still able to find a few things that I could trim. So uh, do that comparison and uh, uh, celebrate, you know, giving yourself a little bit of a haircut. You'll have a little extra money. What could you do with that money? Well, you could save it up. You know, let's see, 150 times 12, that's $1,800. That's close to $2,000. That's a nice little trip to Mexico, you know. Um do a lot of things with that. So uh, that's that's awesome. The other uh, benefit of this is that uh, it gives you financial clarity, especially as we're approaching tax time. And uh, it's really good to uh, you know know what you're spending and uh, where the money's going. And then when you got to you know put those numbers into your turbo tax or whatever, however you get your taxes done, um, you're just a little bit ahead of, ahead of the curb there. Uh, ahead of the curve. And that's what you want. All right. So key takeaways, tax time is here. It is the beginning of the year. This is an ideal time to do a little spring cleaning with your finances. So I recommend you put in the time, be thorough. Uh, when it comes to cutting out items, be ruthless, be ruthless, right? If it doesn't pass the Starbucks test, get rid of it. And then at the end of the process, you will most likely have saved some money don't we all like a little extra cabbage at the end of the month? Sure we do. All right. All right. So uh, that's what I got to say about the financial cleanse. That's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You all rock it out there every day. I honor you. I thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Nomad J saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.